the Ancient of Days, spoken of in the book of Daniel, happens to be the Lord coming on Judgment Day in all of his glory, as it is depicted by Daniel. And then we'll hear about how oh, when the Lord comes, he'll divide people into two groups, believers and unbelievers. And it's interesting how the believers won't even recognize the things that they did for Jesus. And so we don't think, oh, I'm going to earn God's favor by doing something for him. And since we have the sure salvation, the forgiveness of sins through our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we're supposed to encourage one another as we who are still alive today eagerly await to that day when our Lord will come in all of his glory. We then begin with our first hymn, as you have printed in your service folder for today. Uh, immortal, invisible God, only wise, hymn 240 for those of you who might be following along at home, and we'll sing verses 1 and 4. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Dear friends, let us approach God with a true heart and confess our sins, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Lord of life, I confess that I am by nature dead in sin. For faithlessness, worrying, and selfish pride, for sins of habit and sins of choice, for the evil I have done and the good I have failed to do, you should cast me away from your presence forever. O oh Lord, I am sorry for my sins. Forgive me for Jesus' sake. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. In his great mercy, God made us alive in Christ even when we were dead in our sins. Hear the word of Christ through his called a servant. I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. In the peace of forgiveness, let us praise the Lord. Please rise for prayer.
Lord God Almighty, so rule and govern our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may always look forward to the end of this present evil age and to the day of your righteous judgment. Keep us steadfast in true and living faith and present us at last holy and blameless before you. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. You may be seated. Our Old Testament lesson is recorded for us in the book of Daniel. We read there in chapter 7. As I looked, thrones were set in place, and the Ancient of Days took his seat. His clothing was as white as snow. The hair of his head was white like wool. His throne was flaming with fire, and its wheels were all ablaze. A river of fire was flowing, coming out of from before him, thousands upon thousands attended him. Ten thousand times ten thousand stood before him. The court was seated, and the books were opened. The word of the Lord. We confess our Christian faith with the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please rise for the gospel lesson. The gospel lesson is recorded for us in the book of Matthew. We read there in chapter 25. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, he will sit on his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, Come, you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance, the kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you invited me in. I needed clothes, and you clothed me. I was sick, and you looked after me. I was in prison, and you came to visit me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in, or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, Truly, I tell you, whatever you did for one of the least of these my brothers and sisters of mine, you did for me. Then he will say to those on his left, Depart from me, you who are cursed, 
into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me nothing to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not invite me in. I needed clothes, and you did not clothe me. I was sick and in prison, and you did not look after me. They will also answer, Lord, when did we see you hungry or thirsty or a stranger or needing clothes or sick or in prison and did not help you? He will reply, truly, I tell you, whatever you did not do for one of the least of these, you did not do for me. Then they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous to eternal life. The word of the Lord. You may be seated. We continue with our next hymn, hymn 207. The day is surely drawing near. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 5. From our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, who one day will come to judge the living and the dead, he gives us his grace and mercy. The word of God for our meditation is recorded for us in Paul's first letter to the Thessalonians. We read it there in chapter 5. Now, brothers and sisters, about times and dates, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. While people are saying, peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly as labor pains on a pregnant woman, and they will not escape. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of the light and the children of the day. We do not belong to the night or to the darkness. So then let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, put it on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. For God did not appoint us to suffer wrath, but to receive salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. He died for us, 
so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live together with him. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as, in fact, you are doing. The word of the Lord. Dear children of God, well, it's over. <laughs> we don't have to put up with a whole lot of political, political advertising for, well, I'd say a week anyway. I'm just kidding. I hope it's longer than just a week. Yeah, it's over. And I hope that you took the advantage of uh, voting, casting your vote. And as you did, I suppose that there might have been some people that were there that asked you, who'd you vote for? Or maybe even before the 3rd of November, someone came to you and said, well, who are you going to vote for? I hope you do vote, but who are you going to vote for? Whenever I'm asked that question, my answer has always been the same for years. I don't even know when I first started saying this. Do you know what a secret ballot is? And I let it go at that. So now the United States has cast their votes and we're still waiting to see who is elected to be our next president. And as far as that goes, who's going to be serving in the House of Representatives and also in the Senate of our country? Election. Oh, what, a, what an exciting time, especially for politicians. It's interesting that, well, we could say the election is over. And now we wait. Wait until those states who are still counting are finished. And then we might even have to wait longer because, well, I was kind of surprised when I heard that they might have to do it over again, not nationwide, but certain states. Yeah. The election is over. But now when I say the election is over, I'm not talking about you putting your name on a form if you're mailing it in and you're not checking all of these little circles and deciding which candidate you want to serve and represent you. I'm not talking about that kind of election. I'm talking about an election where only one vote was cast. Just one. And God is the one who cast the vote. Paul in his letter to the Ephesians writes about that when he says, Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us in heavenly realms with every spiritual blessing in Christ. For he chose us in Christ before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. He chose us. That Greek word which is translated chose is electus. Hmm, kind of sounds like familiar, doesn't it? Election. It's on these words that are recorded in Ephesians chapter 1 where, and other places in Scripture also, but this is one of the main places where we have what's called the doctrine of election. That God, before the world was made, before creation, chose. He elected those who would be saved. Now what's going to happen? What's going to happen now that, well, now that you've been chosen to be children of God, that now you've been chosen to share with our Lord and Savior the glories of heaven, to live with Him in those eternal mansions which He has prepared for us. Now, right now, what's going to happen? Sure, we're going to continue to live in this world, and, and, uh, but in our lives, what's going to happen? 
Oh, Satan's going to come and try to lead us away from God. He's going to try to deceive us. He's going to try to convince us that our election isn't sure. He's going to try to convince us that, well, you know, maybe there's something that you need to add to what God has already done for you. He's going to try to get you to doubt God's word. Did God really say? And your friends and maybe even some relatives might turn against you because you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And they'll laugh at you and say, oh, that's all foolishness. Those are a bunch of old t stories passed on from generation to generation. They don't really amount to anything. They don't affect us anymore today. Hmm. Therefore, as we look at this Word of God, we need the encouragement of our fellow Christians. We need the encouragement of our fellow Christians to be alert, to be ready for our Lord's coming. We need the encouragement of our fellow Christians to be different than what the world is like. And we need the encouragement of our fellow Christians to be certain that what God in His Word tells us is true. So we look at this Word of God a little bit more carefully. Again, now brothers and sisters, about the times and dates, we do not need to write to you, for you know very well that the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. The day of the Lord is judgment day. The end of all things. When our Lord comes in all of his glory. In the last chapter of the Bible, the book of Revelation, chapter 20, the Lord Jesus says, I am coming soon. You know, that was almost 2,000 years ago. Soon? What do you mean soon? We've been waiting an awful long time. And really the word soon is kind of a relative term. Keep in mind God doesn't have a watch. He doesn't keep time like we do. And when he says soon, that's, that's up to him what that really means. Picture it this way. There's this young lady. She's eight months pregnant. And you walk in here and say, well, you know... Pretty soon you're going to have that baby. And she's lying there and saying, I wish soon was tomorrow. To her, soon would be the next day. Where when you say pretty soon, you're thinking, well, two months from now, at the end of nine months. See how that word soon is used, and God doesn't use it the same way we do. For with the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years like a day. In his word, he tells us that. But the day is going to come when he will come to judge the living and the dead. He describes it like a thief in the night or like labor pains on a pregnant woman. Expect it. Be ready for it, for the Lord to come to judge the living and the dead. Let there be no doubt that it's going to happen. And as we do, we say, okay, I'm going to be ready. Are you ready for a thief to come when he comes? I'm amazed at our modern technology today. It's fantastic that I can look up there and see that little camera, and it's looking at me and all of you people out there in your homes, you can see me just fantastic you can be sitting well you could be sitting here in church and somebody comes knocking on your door and then my fear I hope your whole phones are turned off but if they weren't a robber could come to your house and you look and you look and, oh my goodness I wonder who that is you can see them can't see you but you got the little camera and you can even talk to them and he can talk back. Wow. Well, the point is, is that we don't know when that thief is going to come. Be ready. 
When? All the time. Or, like a woman who is going to have a baby. When is she going to start having those contractions? She doesn't know. And it might even happen that after nine months, she still hasn't had a contraction. And he says, well, baby, are you going to be coming pretty soon? She's waiting. But then all of a sudden, when the contractions are there, oh, time to go. Go get my go bag. Everything's ready. Everything that she needs to go to the hospital and when she comes to bring the baby home, that's all ready to go. Maybe it isn't. But the point is, is that we don't know when the Lord is going to come. So, while we're waiting for him to come, encourage one another. Encourage others to be ready for the coming of the Lord. When was the last time you told somebody, you know, Jesus might come tomorrow? Hmm? We don't know. Encourage one another. Be ready for his coming. It's important for us to do that, be ready. And we look at that, this word of God for a meditation. While people are saying peace and safety, destruction will come on them suddenly and they will not escape. To escape destruction, how do we do that? How do we escape this destruction that the Lord is talking about here? How many of you have been baptized? I'm guessing all of you have. Are you ready for the Lord to come? God in his word says, whoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. Are you ready? Yeah. You can say, I've been baptized. I know God put his name on me and that as such I'm a child of God. I belong to him and I'm an heir of everlasting life. He made me part of his family. Are you ready? Yeah. I don't know how many of you get the meditations booklet. Uh, we do usually read it. I and my wife go over it every morning after breakfast. This week's devotion has a little bit of a comment about Martin Luther. When Luther was down and out and feeling kind of miserable, and, and uh, this isn't in the, that meditations book, but what I'm going to tell you, first of all, and one, one, one day his wife Kate came to him and said, hmm, Jesus must be dead. What? Well, the way you're moping around here, it looks, how, looks like he's still in the grave. What Luther has done, and did apparently on many occasions, that when he wasn't feeling very chipper, he took his slate and wrote on it, you are baptized. And what does that mean? He could look at that and say, yes, I am baptized. I'm a child of God. I'm an ever heir of everlasting life. I'm a brother and sister in Christ Jesus. Yes, I am ready for that day when he'll come to judge the living and the dead. God in his word tells us in 1 Peter chapter 3, baptism now saves you also. And of course, another passage of the Gospel of Mark, whoever believes and is baptized shall be saved. Are you ready when the Lord comes? I'm baptized. And encourage one another. When we've fallen into sin, and certainly we will, then turn to the Lord and say, please forgive me. And he has. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Remember your baptism. Remember that Jesus made you his own an heir of everlasting life, that he elected you, chose you. And that can't be overturned. There's only one vote that makes it that way. 
Encourage one another also to be different. Again, we look at this word of God for a meditation. But you, brothers and sisters, are not in darkness, so that this day should surprise you like a thief. You are all children of light and children of day. We do not belong to the night or to darkness. So then, let us not be like others who are asleep, but let us be awake and sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk, get drunk at night. But since we belong to the day, let us be sober, putting on faith and love as a breastplate and the hope of salvation as a helmet. So then let us not be like others. Others happens in this particular case to be unbelievers. Don't be like unbelievers. You're chosen. Peter in his epistle, first epistle, chapter 2, talks about us being chosen. You are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people belonging to God. That's wonderful. That you may declare the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. Why did the Lord choose you? To declare his praises. Be different. Don't be like everybody else in the world. You know, I can't help but you watch little children, eh, grade school children. They have their cliques, their little groups, and they like to be like other people in that little group. Sure, it happens all the time. You don't want to stick out like a sore thumb. You don't want to be a loner. Yet on the other hand, when you get to be a little bit older, all of a sudden you say, well, yeah, I'd like to be different. Can't help but think of a young lady saying, oh, I hope he notices me. I, don't, I hope he doesn't think I'm just a wallflower. He won't notice me at all. I hope I'm a little bit different to catch his eye. Sure, that happens too. But when our Lord says be different here, he's talking about the way we are in our thoughts, words, and actions. One of the actions that's very simply spelled out here is that and don't be like those who get drunk. Yeah, you know, as children of God, God doesn't say that we shouldn't have alcoholic beverages, but don't overindulge. Be different. Be different in your words and actions. I'm amazed. I, I'm just utterly amazed at the how blue the air gets when I listen to people talk when I'm out in public in a, in a store and, and somebody gets upset and, and they scream and holler and the words that they use one time I saw a bunch of young people walking along, here's boys high school age students they were walking along, oh man you should have heard what they were saying I finally asked, what did you guys do, take a t drink out of the toilet this morning? The filth that's coming out of your mouth. But we're inclined as children of God sometimes to do the same thing. To use God's name in vain, to curse or swear, or to use all kinds of words of profanity. As though, well, everybody else is doing it. And we get into that habit also. Encourage one another. Encourage one another that, as you would want to be encouraged, to praise and glorify our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Yeah. Encourage one another also to have faith in Jesus Christ, to trust in Him. Again, putting on faith and love as a breastplate. <laughs> Remember how the disciples felt on Good Friday watching their Lord and Savior dying? And then later on, where were they? Behind locked doors. Encourage one another to have faith, to trust the Lord that he will come again. Lord, strengthen our faith. Lord, I believe, help my unbelief. And by the way, he helps our unbelief as we hear his word, for faith comes from hearing the word of God. 
Remain faithful to your Lord. Continue to trust in him. And even though it looks like the world is falling apart, it looks like Satan is in control, and it looks like nothing is going right, and when is this COVID-19 going to stop? Lord, why don't you do something about it? Are you really in control, or is this this disease going to ravage the whole world, us included? Today, I just found out that the two pastors at First German have COVID-19. No, they had it. They're at the end of their quarantine period. Lord, when's it going to stop? And we wonder, is it going to come and get me too? Remember, God is in control. And we say along with David, And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Be different. And we can because our Lord says, I will always be with you. I will fear no evil for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Be different. Put on the breastplate of faith and love. Notice how those two are woven together. That where there is faith, love shows itself. That we love our neighbor as ourself. That we're more inclined to be kind and compassionate to him. As God in his word reminds us that we do nothing out of self-conceit for ourselves, but we're also concerned about the affairs of other people and that we want others to prosper. Also, and put on the salvation as a helmet. We have the hope of salvation. Let there be no doubt about that. We have it now. It's guaranteed. And you know why we can be so sure of it? Because we don't have to do anything to get it. Jesus gives it to us. A little bit later, we're going to be celebrating the Lord's Supper. Take, eat, this is my body. Take, drink, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. And then he comes to us and says, for the forgiveness of sins. What did any of us do to earn that forgiveness? He gives it to us. Just as at the beginning of the service, we had the confession of sins and the pastor said, I forgive you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's given to us. And because we have that forgiveness, we have the sure, certain hope of salvation. Salvation in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And a time is coming when all who are in their graves will hear his voice and come out. Those who have done good will rise to life. And those who have done evil will be condemned. Encourage one another. Also encourage one another to be confident. He died for us so that whether we are awake or asleep, we may live, to get, we may live together with him. God hasn't appointed us to suffer wrath. I suppose I could have read that too. But rather, that we live with him forevermore in heaven. He has elected us to be with him forevermore in heaven. We should be confident of that, certain of it, because God has promised it. And God doesn't lie like our politicians so often do who make promises that, humanly speaking, they can't even keep. But God can keep and has kept his promises. He has forgiven us all of our sins. He has assured us of everlasting life. He chose us in Christ Jesus before the creation of the world to be holy and blameless in his sight. He declared us holy and blameless. We aren't by ourselves. 
But again, that's a gift he gives to us. And if we dare so much as to come and say, well, Lord, you know, I think you ought to look upon me with a little bit of favor because look at the, all the wonderful things I've done because I love you and I love my fellow man. And then the Lord is going to come and say, well, you know what I've said and written in the book of Isaiah chapter 64? All our righteous acts are like filthy rags. Oh, I can't be confident in myself. No. But we place our confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ, who appointed us not to suffer, but to live with him forevermore in heaven. You know, Jesus might come tomorrow, and I certainly hope that he does. Well, if he doesn't come tomorrow, then maybe the next day. Maybe during our lifetime, wouldn't that be dying? Wouldn't that be great? Fantastic. Wow. He died for us. That's his great love for us. And what's the result? So that we may live together with him. It's to be that simple. So, my dear children of God, my closing words are going to be words from this word of God for our meditation. Therefore, encourage one another and build each other up, just as, in fact, you are doing. Amen. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. I'm now going to ask you to rise. We continue with the celebration of the Lord's Supper, and we do that with the words that we have on page 9 in our service folder. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good and right that we should at all times and in all places give you thanks, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty and everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who came as the light of the world so that the world may have light and life through him. Blessed are you, O Lord of heaven and earth. We praise and thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ. And we remember the great acts of love through which he has ransomed us from sin, death, and the devil's power. By his incarnation, he became one with us. By his perfect life, who fulfilled your holy will. By his innocent death, he overcame hell. By his rising from the grave, he opened heaven. Invited by your grace and instructed by your word, we approach your table with repentant and joyful hearts. Strengthen us through Christ's body and blood and preserve us in the true faith until we feast with him and all his ransomed people in glory everlasting. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
consecrate the bread and wine, indicating that they'll be used for special use in the Lord's Supper. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. You may be, you may be seated. Please rise. Take and eat. This is the true body of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, given into death for your sins. Take and drink. This is the true blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, which he shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. May the true body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Go in peace. Your sins are forgiven. Amen. We pray. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. We give thanks, O oh Lord, for the foretaste of the heavenly banquet that you have given us to eat and drink in this sacrament. Through this gift you have fed our faith, nourished our hope, and strengthened our love. By your Spirit help us to live as your holy people, until that day when you will receive us as your guests at the heavenly supper of the Lamb, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. You may be seated. We close with hymn 213, Forever with the Lord. We'll sing verses 1, 2, and 4.
Again, good evening. I am thinking that you probably have a better handle on knowing what's happening with Pastor Aiden and his family and how the coronavirus is faring in his family. Again, keep them in your prayers. Also, when you leave this evening, please take your bulletins as well as the little cups that you've used and dispose of them in the waste baskets. And again, may the Lord go with you. Here's an air flag. <laughs>